Hi, my name is Montre Deal. Most people know me by Deuce. I am co-owner of Feeling Rich Clothing. I am Feeling Rich. I am T-Rail, uh, second part of Feeling Rich and co-owners, co-CEO, whatever y'all want to call me. You know what I'm saying? Designer. Um, yeah, and I am Feeling Rich. And you are Feeling Rich. You know what I'm saying? We all Feeling Rich. Yeah, with the newscaster, you are. Hey, man. <laughs> you got to sell it, bro. <laughs> you better see it. Okay, so how I met Deuce. Okay, let me think. Give me one second. Okay, so how I remember. This is my sad story. I don't know if it's factual, but this is how I remember. I just remember I used to hang with his uncle, uh, DJ Fresh, but, you know, everybody know him as ATL. But, uh, yeah, we used to go over there, and like I said, I used to feel a little uncomfortable because I was a little lame. You know, I was quiet. They was, like, cool, chill, you know what I'm saying? They was hood. So it was like, man... Who is these dudes? You know what I'm saying? Then uh, Fresh moved away to Cincinnati. And I think when me and Julia started hanging more, Deuce came around. I had my own spot. We was kicking it, partying. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and then, like, I started kind of, like, following him at every job because he always found the good jobs that paid. So I always, like, followed him, like, oh, so they hired, you know? So, yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 How, I mean, how do you remember? Or do you how not remember? How I met T-Real was... <laughs> The first time, I'm trying to think. Okay, so look, the first time, nah, I'm going to take it back before that. I didn't know him, know him then, but his sister, Mula, had got into a fight at one of our parties. So we, so my uncle, you know, Fresh was like, hey, bro, like, get her away. Like, that's our uh, our homie's sister. I'm like, who's you talking He's like, that's T-Rail's sister. So T-Rail walks up and, like, what's going on? So that's how I kind of met him the first time. And then the other time was, yeah, he came on our uh, – Came over my house on 43rd and Market. You know, that's where everybody used to kind of gamble at and hang out at. And then that's when we first linked up. And then, like you said, uh, Fresh had uh, moved out. Uh, you know, he he moved out to um, Frankfurt and then Cincinnati or whatever. So Junior started hanging uh, over t Rex house. So I started hanging over t Rex house because, you know, we was just always together. And like he said, he had his own spot. So, I mean, I had a couple little spots, but that ain't no, nowhere I was trying to take no chick to. <laughs> so... We was like, bro, got there. He was like, man, what's up? And he used to always be like, man, you got some chicks, man. Bring them through. <laughs> so we was like, this is before we was in a relationship for yeah. anybody that you did. So he was like, man, bring them through. And it just became like the it party spot, spot like the spot. turn up spot. And yeah. then it was like you said, though, it was like we always would have problems where we would like hate where we was working at. And I just always had a, a way of finding myself in a better situation. So I used to just be like, uh, Bro, what you doing? He always he be telling me like in between jobs. I'm not walking out. He's to, like, man, I'm about to hit him with the Drake walk. <laughs> and that just means he's about to walk out. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, quit, I used to be like, bro, well, I got something else. I'm about to work. He was like, man, put me on. So kind of just did that like three times, I think. Yeah. And then that's just that's how we, you know, how we did. So the whole idea of feeling rich got started. Off as a joke, because you know he's a comedian, so you can't take what he says serious at all. So we was working at this it's, it's one spot, so I was actually talking about these two dudes named Phil and Rich from uh, Dream Team. And I was just like, man, I just talked to, you know, Phil and Rich. And he was like, man, hold on, that sound like a clothing line. So I was like, bro, shut up, quit playing. So I'm, I'm like, let me finish my story. And he was like, nah, that sound like a clothing line. So I'm like, bro, here you go, like. Cause we used to lightweight argue because he used to always cut me off to try to, you know, have a story or some type of jokes. So I'm like, bro, let me finish my story. But then he was like, nah, it really sounds like a clothing line. So I'm like, well, what you mean? So we kind of talked about it for like an hour. And I know one thing I'm good at is I can I can find just about anything that I need to find. So we was like, well, how are we going to do it? What you wanted to woo-woo? He told me how he wanted it to, you know, to be spelled. And I just like, well, bet I got a graphic designer in London who do all the, you know, all of the industry stuff. Let me just holler at him and see what he can come up with. And, you know, they sent us some stuff. And then by the end of the day, we had, like, our first, like, official mock-up of our logo. And then, you know, the next week they sent us, like, what they sent us, like, five of them, I think. They sent us, like, four or five logos all at one time. And then that's just kind of where, you know, where it started at. Yep. We used to work at DHL. Oh, uh, oh my God. Man, I hated that job. I was... <laughs> Late almost every day, Deuce was a supervisor, and I took full advantage of him being a supervisor because <laughs> I wouldn't come to work on time. I don't care what's going on. I was partying all night, and now I'm coming to work 
20 to 30 minutes late every day. It's and y'all going to get over it. And I'm going to eat <laughs> before I start working because I need my energy. <laughs> so y'all uh, going to get over it. Nah, but okay, like you said, basically, we were talking about feeling rich to uh, promoters from Louisville, you know, uh, Dream Team. Yeah. So we was talking about them, and I just was like, man, feeling rich, just like, that just sounded like something, man. I was like, man, that sounded like something. He was like, if you serious, he was like, but how would you spell it? So I'm like, Okay, it got to be cool a little bit, you know. Yeah. It, it got to be cool. So I'm like, F-E-E-L apostrophe, man. I thought I came up with something. Apostrophe. apostrophe. I was like, ooh, okay, cool. <laughs> apostrophe in. Feeling rich. Okay, cool. So he had the graphic designer or whatever. He hit us up. Probably like two weeks later, we had like 100 shirts, 60 shirts, probably like yeah. five different colorways. We didn't have that big of a drop, but it just looked looked like something yeah, just because we came out of nowhere with it. So like I said, and uh. We started from T-shirts and we were just knocking the T-shirts and everybody, you know what I'm saying, just just got with it. I don't know how, it just it just came together. I can't really take no credit for it. It just it just happened. It was like happenstance, man. Like God, the yeah. right time, the right conversation. Yeah, yeah. it had to be because though when I first first of all, we didn't even know how to actually properly take a picture of the shirts and put them online. Yeah, we didn't know how to. You know, it was just like. I just I, laid them on the yeah, couch. I took a picture and I put it on the couch. <laughs> T-Rex was like, nah, bro, that's ugly. Like, we got it. So he maneuvered it, yeah. put it together. Laid it on the floor. Yeah, put every good. <laughs> so Y'all might think it's dirty. But, yeah, put it on the floor because yeah, I don't know why. On the floor, it looked better. On the couch, it just because you, you, it was lumpy it looking. You, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. couldn't really get that good angle. But I put it on the floor. I had decent little floors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. little little play, I yeah. mean, uh, fake uh, uh, wood grain or whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right, but you know, it, it was clean, it, though. Yeah. And I, and I had a couple filters, so, yeah. And we did it. And it was like, as soon as we actually put it online, it might not have been a whole hour later, um, I had got a call from somebody doing a fashion show at, uh, at K-State. They said, we seen your clothing line. We wanted to know if you wanted to come set up a table. We, we know it's last minute. So I'm a hustler. If it's about some coins, man, I'm on the way. So I was like, well, what time it start? I think they called me at like 10 in the morning. They was like, it started at 1. So I told T Real, bro was like, man, I got something to do. I said, don't worry about it. I'm ready to just ride down there. When I really was on Faith and Fumes. I knew one person's name and I knew the address, but I'm like, I don't know what's going to transpire, but I'm going to come back with some brick. We just hit the road, you know? And then even from down there, when we first, like, when we set the, when I set the table and stuff up, like, people was buying it and people was, like, interested in it. And then, you know, of course, I had to put, you know, 20 on 10, took a picture. And posted it, told people we at K State. Then you everybody, selling fast. Yep. <laughs> everybody in the city was like, "Ah, oh, what is that? Let me get that when I get back." So just you know, it just start. It just really started bubbling from the day that we first had our first T-shirts. Man, it just been going crazy. How we knew it was, you know, about the about the, you know, like we were sure about it. We were like confident. I don't like. We really didn't know. Like it was just. It happened so like we thought about it. He hollered at the graphic designer. Um, the graphic designer sent the logos. He like, okay. When I looked at it, it jumped in my eye. I'm like, okay, this is the logo we need to go with. Yeah, it was there. Like that was I our said. first official yeah. logo, right? So there. we just slapped it on shirt on cheap little cheap t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? We ordered some wholesale cheap t-shirts. Uh, got somebody. Who was it that was doing our uh, shirts at first? Chase Your Dream, shout out to them. Chase nope, Your Dream. No, it wasn't Chase Your Dream first. That wasn't was, the first people? No, nah, the first people was, uh, I can't think of, I can't think of their name. We ain't even going to say their name because they, cause they owe us some yeah, bread. Yeah, but shout out to them. But they did yeah. our shirts and, like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, okay, as soon as we posted that first picture and on Facebook, and everybody like, oh, okay, can you bring me one extra large? Can you bring me one? Yeah, yeah I got kids shirts. He was like, oh, okay, cool. And we yeah. sold them real fast. They sold out. We was like, bro. Yeah. It, but we took the money and we split the money. We was like, okay, <laughs> we got the money. And then we wanted some more shirts. And we was like, dang, we split the money. So now we got to wait till we get paid. <laughs> it's like, dang. So we had to start from scratch again. And we just kept yeah. doing T-shirts, really. Yeah, so people was like, ah, oh, little T-shirt line, man. But we wanted to be a clothing line. You know what I'm saying? We wanted to be respected as a clothing line instead of yeah. like a T-shirt brand. So we just, I mean, really, we did just keep doing T-shirts. We just yeah, did, we did t different like, T-shirts. Uh, we did T-shirts for like two years. <laughs> like, we was like... And then it got to the point to where, like he said, when we first, we I'm talking about we knocked all of our whole first order. We probably got them gone in like a week. So in our mind, shit, we got some extra bread. We were making some. Give me some chicken, yeah, some Mike Hart lemonade. Yeah. 
<laughs> One thing about T Rail boy, he get anything extra. If he have a good day, he gonna get that chicken, chicken at Mike Hart. Hey, man. So yeah, well, we end up getting some. We end up getting the bread, and we didn't think. We, we weren't thinking about putting the money. We weren't thinking about putting them back in there. We just like, oh, it's all right. But then once we sold everything, people kept asking. So we was like, well, we we might need to do some more shirts. But I was like, man, I don't really like you know having to wait that long. Let's see what else we can do in the meantime. But we just got some more. Like we just ordered some more shirts. I think we ordered a hundred for that next time, and then. Uh, I had found somebody here who could do them, and they said they could have them done in like three days. So I'm like two weeks versus three days. And I'm like the quality ain't as good, but we can get more color schemes, we can get more options, we can get it. So then, literally, we used to take pre-orders Monday, and then we'll let them know you'll have your shirts Friday, and we was just bubbling. And that's when Chase Your Dreams, Chase Your Dreams helped us out a lot, like custom we, shirts. Yeah, yeah, custom shirts, cause like. We was having people like, hey, we got these shoes. Hey, we got this going on. Hey, can y'all do this color? Can y'all do this? And just, man, it just started going crazy. Like, I'm talking about every Monday, people would pay their money. Friday, we would have them their shirts. And we, we, it was just our system. Like, Monday, tell us what you want. Friday, you get it. And it's got to the point to where we got so much, so many orders, we ain't even have to start taking pre-orders no more. We just start, what color you want? Bam, we'll have it Friday because we knew if you didn't buy it, people was hitting our phones Friday for some shirts. Like, somebody going to buy these mugs. And they just was bubbling. But and then when we got the first glitter shirt, that mug changed the game. We thought we was doing something. Man. That one it was bedazzling, wasn't it? <laughs> I wore that red and black. Sparkle, a little sparkle, bro. Yeah. I, I thought that was like top of the fashion. Like, man, we got glitter now. Yeah, y'all can't do nothing with us, man. All hey. our shirts is glitter. We doing everything glitter. Hey, we did glitter for like <laughs> four months, man. Hey, but it was going, but like it was going crazy though. But people it was, was dope at the time. Though. Yeah, for the time it was dope. Though. Yeah, man. But it was just, it was just something different. It was just over and over. We, we just was doing trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And then at one point, we start. People kept saying like. Little t shirt line, and it was like, bro, why you keep calling us a little t shirt line? Like, what you mean? Like, put some respect on our name, we got bro. Several t shirts, yeah. We fit, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't sell 2,000 t shirts this week, bro. You got us messed up, but we really, we was a t shirt line, yeah, that's how we would, <laughs> that's how we would, but then, and, and, but then it just came to a point to where we was just like, bro, I was like, bro, I think we need to do something else. He's like, well, what are we gonna do? I'm like, bro, I don't know, I'm ready to find something so. I learned this early. Google and YouTube University, you can find anything you need. So I was just YouTubing and Googling everything, found some people who could do some stuff, found some wholesale items, and we just started. Man, we just started putting crazy orders in. We would drop stuff off. And then we we, we used to get so busy when, when we first dropped our hats. We knew they told us two weeks when we dropped the stuff off. We'll call them like four days later. Hey, is our order ready? Hey, our order ready? Hey, bro, hurry up, bro. Y'all need it. But it was just like we couldn't keep up with the demand, so we was trying to pressure the other people instead of changing our actual, like, system. Yeah, instead of changing our systems around. And so, the, so the most challenging part um, from Jump was really going from T-shirt line to actually trying to create outfits. So we didn't know how to reach out to a warehouse or a factory to make our clothes from scratch. So we was like, okay, we can go on. It's a little lovely wholesale. We was going on anything that said wholesale.com. We was on We it. was on wholesale.com. <laughs> anything wholesale.com. We was going to get the T-shirts, baseball T-shirts. I think the first thing we did separate from a T-shirt was like a jersey. Yeah, I think we, we went on Epic Sports. So if y'all starting off, if y'all want to, it's, it's a cheap way. Go to Epic, Epic Sports. Sports they got all type of jerseys, hats. Blah blah blah, and we just ordered a whole lot of stuff like that, and we just went took it to Chase Your Dreams, and um, they would just put it together. So we thought we was doing something. We had a hat to match a shirt, so we like, cool, we gonna do the hat and shirt combo I now. Now we have a t-shirt and hat line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So we so we started doing the hats to t-shirt combo. We just kept dropping that. It was like it was our sister for a little minute. Then we found these shorts for the men. They was like flimsy. They was thin. Then More cotton, them but flimsy. we got them embroidered. So we like, okay, yeah, man, y'all can't mess with us. We got flimsy shorts with the, you know, yeah. embroidery on there. We got, we got you know it. what I'm saying? And you can't tell if they flimsy if you sag them a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, so we had to give that disclaimer. Like, I don't know how tall you are, but you might want to sag a little bit for yeah. them. To, you know, they was like, yeah, yeah, they was trash. But uh, um, just like trying to find a manufacturer was the most difficult part because it's like we didn't know. Like, like 
if you like if you haven't did this business, you don't have anybody who who have done this business. And if somebody has done it, if you ask them for it, most times they're not going to give it to you because they feel like you're going to take off. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, but I understood it too. So it's like, I never really took it personal. I just was like, dang, man, I wish, you know what I'm saying? I wish somebody would help us out. Yeah. And we just kept just going, you know, kind of going through that rough patch of just ordering wholesale stuff. It like, feeling like the sizes was off. You have to order us two sizes man. bigger. Um, Even stuff. though some of the colors was off, we'll order some red pants and a red shirt, and they'll get here. It's like two different, two different shades. Reds, this one's like cranberry. A, this one's a <laughs> strawberry. This one's a cranberry. Even some of the uh, some of the stuff like you would assume would be like black. Like yeah, nah, black is different. This yeah, was, it was like an ashy black. Then they gave us like a, a concrete black. And they gave us this charcoal. They they gave us so much stuff. We was like, yeah. but it was all trial and error. And we even this is something some of y'all don't know. I mean, we can say it now. We was trying to experiment so much. We used to go to Burlington, hit up their clearance Hobby. rack. We used Hobby to go Lobby. To Hobby Lobby. Walmart. Walmart. Route 21. <laughs> any any H&M. We used to go anywhere to have. Sorry, H&M. Sorry, Route 21. Yeah. We, we, we was taking y'all stuff, ripping the tags off and, of it, and, and, we, and sticking our logo And on we it. bubbled. We and people didn't know. Hey, listen. It's too late, though. You know. Y'all hey, can't man, do nothing yeah, now. Man. But, that cash is spent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That cash is spent. <laughs> but yeah, right. well, like just because we, like you said, we really didn't know, and it wasn't really nobody here who had really done clothes. Like we seen people do t-shirts, but no one really had done like actual clothes. So we really didn't know what to do. So it was just trial and error. It ain't like you could call like your OG or call your uncle and be like, hey. Well, what I what I what do I need to do if I won't get a whole clothing line done? People hitting you with the shoot. I don't know. But you better go to the store and ask somebody. <laughs> ain't nothing. So we just was trying everything we could, and we 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 made a lot of mistakes. We wasted a lot of bread, but you know, it ain't really no 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 losses. You know, we just look at them as lessons. We mm -hmm. just take it, you know, one day at a time. Just take it in stride. So when we was trying to get our brand recognized, and just I just felt the fresh yeah. Purse. Yeah, I just feel like we. I just got a hustling background, so I just feel like the the first thing you could do is just reach out to the people who you know got a little buzz or got a little bit of exposure. So fresh, you know, if, that's, that's my uncle, but we really more like brothers. So it's like, hey, bro, we doing this. We know you about to go on tour. We know you ready to do uh, the homecomings. Can we give you our stuff to work? And you're like, bam, that's like the first person. So, you know, it helped out a little bit. But even on top of that, he kind of became – out of reach because he was doing so much. So we was like, man, we got to find another way to do it. So I just, uh, you know, I was already tapped into, like, the party and the entertainment scene. So I just started asking some of the promoters, like, hey, man, we got some, you know, some new clothes. When y'all artists come in town, can we give them some stuff, take pictures or whatever, whatever. But it just kind of just, it was, it was still, like, just getting up every day and just making something happen. It wasn't, like, no game plan. It wasn't like we wrote nothing down and playing nothing out. Like, it would just be times where t rock might hit me like, hey, bro, did you see so-and-so's going to be here today? I'm like, nope, but I know now where they're going to be at. And I just, like, send me the flyer. I call the people on the fly, like, hey, your artist is here, woo-woo. And then, you know, the radio station, I was already connected to them. So some of them were just like, you know, I get you, I'll set you up. And we just was trying to get as many people on our clothes as possible. Even if they didn't like the stuff, you gonna wear this. You gonna take a picture and we gonna post you and we, we gonna tag you on here and you gonna share it. Yeah, but some of the people kind of respected it though. Like, I think the first artist we actually got was I Heart Memphis, I think. Yeah. Well, it was actually his, I mean, we gave him the clothes, but he didn't really wear it. His friend wore it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, his, his hype man yeah. had wore it. Uh, on like on TV, they wanted one on six and party, one on six and party for the, the little the New, New Year's, Year's Eve. joint. New Year's Eve, because yeah. I was at I was at church actually. That's what was crazy. I was at church and my auntie had sent me the screenshot. She was like, "Y'all are on BET." I'm like, "How do, like how the hell are we on BET? Yeah. What are you talking about?" And she he was like his friend was on there wearing it. You know, feel me? But we kept promoing like I Heart Memphis wearing it because he was because I mean his <laughs> song was stage. big. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Hit the quine if y'all familiar with that song. So like that was like one of the biggest songs out. So so like. My auntie had took pictures of the TV. She sent it to me. So I'm, I feel me like, I ain't even thinking about God right now. I'm about to post my feeling rich stuff. I'm like, here. <laughs> I'm, like, man, I'm, I'm sorry, God. Hey, big I'm, about to, I'm about to post my stuff so everybody can see that we on BT right now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, uh, yeah, like, that's, like, just with Deuce having a relationship with people at the um, 
feel me? Like at the radio station, stuff like that, that kind of helped because like anybody who came in, it just helped with like pictures and promo, you know what I'm saying, content. So yeah. where we, even if they didn't wear it, they took a picture with it for for that second. Yeah. So he had Ray J take a picture with it, Princess, yep. any other people uh, that you? Big Crit, um, Rhapsody. Uh, I, I think we did do a, a Rich Homie Quan. Yeah, um, matter of fact, we met him in Cincinnati, yeah. Uh, yeah, Webby, we did. We did. Uh, Webby, we 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 hung with dude a couple times. Then like we had Brooklyn Queen. Like Brooklyn became one of the first actual artists who actually rocked with us. Like at the where she would like keep in touch with us. Like, hey, y'all got anything new? Like we gon' you know I'm gonna be do doing this tour. I'm gonna be here. Or hey, I, uh, I'm gonna be coming down to Louisville for this show. Uh, you know, let me know if y'all want me to wear whatever. Like she actually came to us. It was like, I, you know, I like it. Well, I had gave her some stuff at first, but then she was just like, man, I like it. Whatever. I talked to her, you know, her, her mama, Miss Kim, and she was like, yeah. So we kind of feel, that was kind of our first actual, I guess you could say, like, brand ambassador. Like, she was always, like, even still now, like, we just, I just talked to her the other day. I just sent something to her out in L.A. She ready to do a movie. She was like, I got you, bro. So it was like, always kind of just, just going for it. Like, ain't nobody here going to give you nothing. Everybody kind of, like, afraid that... If you get to the second level, it's gonna keep them from getting to the second level. So we, we just been getting up every day going to get it. So just like going from being brothers to uh business partners, man, I mean, it is tricky, you know what I'm saying? Because you do have roles. Somebody do gotta be a little little bit of a leader. I know some people get in groups and they be like, ah oh, nah, ain't no leader, we all got equal. But it's like sometimes you need somebody to have that leader aspect. I know me, I'm lazy. I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. Deuce guy called me, tell me 50 times, bro, what's up with the print? Then I always got a good excuse, like, ah, oh, yeah, bro, I'm about to do it tomorrow. Man, you feel me like the kids is getting on my too. nerves. Ah, oh, yeah, quick man, I had to work overtime. <laughs> but Deuce always be, like, he don't really get on me. It, it, but it has been a few times, he's like, bro, you need to get on your stuff. And I used to be like, man, why you, you know, why are you talking to me like that? You know what I'm saying? Don't be talking, you know what I'm saying? Don't be talking to me crazy. Whatever, but you know what I'm saying? But hey. sometimes I had to check myself because like I know that Deuce is gonna make sure that things is gonna get done. I'm like the creative person, so I'm kinda all over the place, you know what I'm saying? Hey. Everything don't happen just structurally for me like that. Like I just gotta see it, envision it, and then it has to come out naturally. Deuce got like a like a system. He's gonna get up at 4:30, he's gonna do it, send out his emails, phone calls. I'm going to send out the emails and Deuce be like, hey, bro, so-and-so's trying to see what color, you, whatever. Ah, oh, okay. Let me go check the text message real quick. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, I appreciate him being patient with me. And like I said, we have had times where it's been a little, you know, um, hostile. Uh, hostile. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because we just had different visions. I probably grew out of love with it. He probably still wanted to go. I just was like, man, ain't nobody buying us. Because, like, we got to a groove to where it was like, first it was like bubbling, and then it got to like a standstill. Yeah. It wasn't growing. When nobody wanted to buy it no more. We kept doing the same things. We wasn't elevated. So it's like, I fell out of love with it. Dude still wanted to go. I'm just like, man, like, whatever. I, I wasn't even responding to a lot of stuff, and he kept it going for real. So, um, but yeah, like, it is tough, you know what I'm saying? But you got to also, you know, remember why y'all started doing that thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's the goal at hand? And if, like, you got to, you know, like, always check on each other and see, is this something that you really still want to do? Because if you don't, y'all got to have that conversation because it's going to always be some friction. If you really, if your heart ain't in it and this person's giving they all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, um, that's one thing I could credit do on. He's always, like, it don't matter how I was looking. He's like, bro, like, let's keep going. Let's drop some. Even if I didn't like the design, he's like, I don't care. I still want to drop it just to keep their name going. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, man, it's tough. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it has a lot of perks. It's <clears throat> it's more fun doing it with somebody that you know, that you kind of, you know, grew with, grew yeah. up with. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. It is, but like you said, it was it was some hostile moments too, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, Because like you said, bro, be. I'm lazy, I, man. I'll be calling them like, hey, bro, you know, we. Uh, Cause like like you said, once we kind of got to a groove, it was kind of like a system. Like, all right, Monday we gonna do X, Y, and Z. So I'm not the create. I can help create stuff, but when it comes to like color schemes or designs, or no, bro, you gonna probably see me in some basic. I might have a little flare, but if it's some little flare, it was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So a lot of times I have to lean on him to create certain stuff. So it'd be like, bro, what's up? I need to like, bro, what's up? And some of it is like. Bro, quit talking to me like that. Like, bro, you ain't mine. And it's like, bro, anyway, like, what's up? So we, it was like 
a give and take, but I just know like that's not really my area of expertise. But I also seen like how great he is at what he does. So it's kind of like me as a you know as a big brother like pushing him like bro, come on like you better than that, bro. Like you just gotta give it a little bit more you know thought, a little bit more heart into it, and like it's going you know it's gonna get there. Like you just gotta keep going. Like you can't give up. And it was times that we actually actually had a conversation about like like maybe it might just need it might just be time for us to sell. Cause we actually had a couple of people who was trying to buy, but then I was just like, man, nah, I ain't, we ain't selling this, bro. Like, we've been doing this so much, like it's actually in how we talk, like feeling rich, like it's actually like it's something that we actually say consistently. And when we actually see certain people, when we like when I start conversations, I'll be like, how you feeling? I, cause I do it so much, it's like literally a part of my, you feel me, a part of my verbiage. So it's like, no, like we gonna make it shake. We just gotta keep going, but. I I do know about just, you know, pushing through when, you know, everything ain't going well. But I also just, I also, like I said, know how great he is at the creating and putting stuff together. I wouldn't be able to do it at all. At all. We would just have, like, one color. Yeah, we would just have, like, hoodie, T-shirts. Pants, they would just be basic with a logo on it, and uh, he brings the the flair, the fun, the creativity, all of it into it. And I just kind of like embody it and just package it up, and feel me, and bring it to the. So he's kind of like it's kind of almost like he's a plug at at whatever he you know does the creativity, colors, the ideas, and I'm and I'm just like the person that just takes it to the block. Like I package it up, break it down, do what I need to be doing, put a tag on it. And it's gonna get sold. I know that for sure. Whatever. If y'all see anything with feeling rich, we still talking about clothes, right? Yeah, we have okay, my okay, bad. Okay, I'm okay, just saying, okay. if y'all see anything with feeling rich, bro, I promise <laughs> yeah, you, I don't care sure. what you talking about. Like Packaging, it's gonna, breaking it's it gonna down. be somewhere. It's gonna be somewhere. Uh, the next five years and the future of feeling rich, um, bigger, um. Bigger releases, more probably going to have a, a storefront. I don't really know where yet, but we're going to probably have a lot more options for you. Not just the pants, not just the t-shirts, not just the hoodies. It's going to have actual like accessories, actual everything that you need to put on as far as clothing. It's feeling rich. You're going to have you know some type of stake in it. So just be looking forward to it. A lot of that. Be looking forward to a lot more uh, cities and actually countries too. We got some more uh, opportunities with some stuff overseas, and just look. You know, I just look forward to us also being able to involve our, you know, our children in it too, because that's kind of what we created it for, for us to be able to pass it down to our children. So we want to go ahead and start getting them familiar with becoming, you know, owners of a company and becoming, you know, entrepreneurs or what all that you actually have to do with it. But we want to involve them to where they'll be able to take certain parts of feeling rich to create or manage or operate those, you know, those lanes uh, within the company. Because it's not just our company, you know, right. it's it's their company too. Mm -hmm. uh, where do I see feeling rich, man? Next five years, man, I just sh big major. Like I said, probably a storefront here in the city, maybe somewhere else in another city. I don't know. It could be Atlanta, New York. I wanted to be in a major city. Yeah, it's um, gonna have to be in a major city. But um, just just better designs, better quality. Um, just giving more opportunities. I want to create jobs. You know what I'm saying? We right here in the city. A lot of people leave. They really don't. I mean, they might come and put a. You know, do. I mean, everybody do their part. You know what I'm saying? But my part, what I want to do is come back and give opportunities, give jobs, modeling jobs. Whether you work in a store, whether you doing a photo shoot, whether you want to be a cameraman videographer, uh, just keep on creating opportunities. Like I said, let the children pick up where, you know, once we're done with it, let the kids carry it on. And um, yeah, man, just just be a household name. That's ultimately the goal. I want to be a household name. I want to be up there with the Polo. I want to be up there with the Gucci and the Fendi. I want to be a luxury brand at some point. I want to ha at least have a luxury department. If, if, if not, the whole brand be luxury. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just like just having fun. Like, I, I, I want the brand to just be something that people could just associate with just something positive, um, something that they can inspire to be, um, and just, you know, just help people grow, motivate them, you know what I'm saying? So 
Um, I just want Philly Rich to be a household name, ultimately. Man. I'm rambling. But, yeah, man, yeah. I just I, I just want everybody to rock with it because I feel like it's something that anybody can relate to. You know what I'm saying? We all want to feel rich. And when people think about riches, they think about money. But it's not about money. It's about how you feel. It's about, like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I got my peoples around me. I'm taking care of my people. That stuff make me feel good. That stuff make me feel rich. Yeah. Okay, I'm putting my people in a better position. Yes, that make me feel good. That makes me feel rich. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I done overcame a lot of stuff. Yeah, people didn't think I was going to be here, but... I, you know, I made it through everything that I thought I couldn't make it. Right. That made me feel good. Right. That makes me feel rich. You know what I'm saying? So. We are based out of Louisville, Kentucky. And, you know, I mean, people ask us, what's the city mean? You know, how do they affect us? It's like, it made us. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, like, we didn't start at the A. We didn't start in a different city. We started where we lived at. We started with the people that we knew, our family, our friends, the people closest to us. We dropped it. And they supported it first. And then some of their friends supported it. And then somehow the people that we knew that did live out of town, they got their friends to rock it. So you know what I'm saying? But nothing's better than having your home be behind you. Because what's the point of having the whole the whole world behind you if your, the people that you grew up with or that made you or built you and made you up to who you are, you know, ain't supported it. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I want my city to support it more than anybody. You know, I know people get uh, uh, bad rap, you know, for Louisville. I'll, People don't support her, but I, I actually think, you know what I'm saying, without the city, we wouldn't even be where we are today, you know what I'm saying? Like, Definitely. everybody always supporting us, you know what I'm saying? It might be here and there. I don't never hear it. Most of the stuff that I hear about Philly Rich is positive, so, yeah. Uh, what I feel like the city means to Philly Rich, it's everything. It's where we it's where we first started it. It's where we learned our lessons at. It's where we was able to um, actually it's where we was actually able to get motivated that we can actually do this clothing line. It's where we was actually able to see how people respond to what we dropped, to see how they actually started to embody um, feeling rich. Like some of the some of the people started wearing it so much or they liked it so much, like they actually wanted to be like a part of their whatever else that, that they was doing. Like we had some people who were, you know, teachers. Like they wanted to know, can they start talking about you know, feeling rich to their students. Like we actually have people who are, um, like in the in the jails. Like I, I used to go talk to the jails. We can't really do too much right now because of COVID. But even some of the, the people who was in charge of those programs want to know: Can they talk about the meaning of feeling rich to you know to the inmates or to the you know juvenile detention centers or to whoever? And then it just always it just kind of comes back full circle. Even with uh, one of the artists, you know, Jonah Work. This is one of the uh, pieces that we just done for a new collection, uh, Jonah. Where it was, it was like our little brother. Some people know him as Flex, uh, but like he loved it so much. Like he was just like, man, this is what I'm gonna wear when I perform. This is what I'm gonna wear when I do whatever. It was like it was. It actually became a part of his musical career. So it's just for people to embody and love something that much off an idea that came off between just you know us conversating in our brains. And for them to love it to where they want to put it a part of their daily routine or daily life, man, that means everything. Yeah, yeah, man. And yeah, well, man, we got to elaborate on Jonah Ware. So if you're not familiar with him, he is Lil Flex. He, you know, he was taken from us uh, not that long ago. And uh, like I said, like he was always excited. He he made me excited when I didn't care about it. You know what I'm saying? He always wore it. He made his friends wear it. He put it in his yeah. videos. You know, anything that he had going on, he wanted feeling rich. Like I said. Even for a performance, he, he let me style him, and I didn't even put him in Feeling Rich. I just took him to the mall and told him, like, put this outfit on, whatever. So, like um, like I said, we had to honor him. So this is something that, you know, that you can get from the website. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to plug it in. But, yeah, uh, like I said, everything that we've done is because of the city supported. Like I said, like, it's because of the city. So we can't take credit for everything. It's, it's the people who supported us that made us who we are. So shout out to Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. Uh, just figure it out. Just keep going. Just keep looking. You might not do it right the first time. You might not get it right. It might take a few years. I mean, you might fall off. You might give up on it. You might fall out of love with it like I did. But just keep going, man. Remember why you got started and keep pushing, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. For sure. Second that.
I thought I came up with something. Apostrophe. I was like, ooh, okay, cool. <laughs> Apostrophe in. Feeling rich. Okay, cool.